Scotland book haul. Here we go. I'm finally able to make this video for you all after so much traveling and then getting sick. I spent five days in Edinburgh and during that time I hit up 13 bookstores. That is right, 13 because my book lover heart had to visit as many as possible in this beautiful city. Can't wait to show you my book haul and highlight some bookstores that freaking stole my heart so that if you ever find yourself in Edinburgh, you make sure you hit these up. What is up mi gente? Welcome or welcome back. I am Exo Joe. After traveling here, traveling there, I finally got so freaking sick. I tried to recover super, super fast because one of my best friends was getting married and his wedding was fast approaching. So as soon as I recovered, I flew straight to this huge, huge event and now I'm finally back. I'm trying to settle into a new routine out here in California. So please bear with me as I figure out my new filming spot. I'm trying to figure out how to bring in my book how to really set up in my new home. But I super, super missed you and I was so excited to make this video. Scotland has been on the top of my list for multiple years now. And of course, the panoramic stopped my plans. It stopped everyone's plans. And I was finally able to visit the beautiful country of Scotland this year. I was super, super grateful, stunned, overwhelmed by this gorgeous, gorgeous city. I can't wait to go back. I definitely have way more I need to see, including the highlands, the lowlands, maybe some islands. I am so freaking happy that I made Edinburgh my very first city. It is filled with so many books and the city just stole my heart, which is why I'm also so happy that I'm wearing this hoodie that I got there. It's super cheesy. I know it just says Edinburgh, Scotland. It's a crew neck, but it's so warm and cozy. I'm not usually the type that buys a hoodie or a t-shirt that has the city's name on it where I'm visiting. But in this case, I just fell in love with the sweater and I had to get it and it's so cozy. Now, if you didn't know, books have multiple versions. We we have our special editions, but we also have book editions that are exclusive to its own country. So Spain might have a different one than Australia, might have a different one than Canada, might have a different one than the US. I mean, we have all these different versions out there in the world. So when I was going to Scotland, I knew I was going to UK editions, Waterstones, Blackwell, Toppings, Territory, and I just had to make sure I picked some highly anticipated releases. First one I want to actually feature is A Study in Drowning. That is right, I was able to stag myself a Waterstones edition. I saw this one in person, it was sold out online. I see a lot of people looking for this edition as well and I mean, look at it. Look at these edges, it is so freaking beautiful. And yes, it is Dark Academia. This is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. It's been a highly, a highly anticipated release. It has a beautiful foil, the only enemy is the sea. It sounds so mysterious. And it's so funny because I just love this edition so much, even though I know that one of my sub boxes created this and redesigned it, I just had to get it. And this actually came from one of my favorite stores, which was Blackwell's. So I was really surprised when I visited Blackwell's. I thought it was just gonna be super small, not a lot to feature, and I was so dead wrong. I had no idea that Blackwell's was actually recently bought by Waterstones. And so because they are now part of the Waterstones, franchise they have a lot of Waterstones editions and I was able to snag this baby the day before its release okay don't come at Blackwell's if any publisher sees this it's perfectly normal for some books to have the book available a day or two before its release it's not that uncommon it's not a crime but I was just happy I snagged this beautiful edition we'll see if I keep it or if I swap it if I end up liking the other SE video to come more than this one. Speaking of Waterstones, I actually found this one. It's called The Maiden. I read the blurb and it just sounded so incredibly interesting and it actually takes place in Edinburgh. Before we get to the blurb, look at these edges. Okay, I gotta admit, like yes, I do judge a book by its cover sometimes. It is so beautiful. I mean, Waterstones and Blackwells in general had so many beautiful editions out there. But fortunately, I don't just buy for the cover, at least most of this haul isn't just bought for the cover. I had to make sure I actually enjoyed this book because uh, your girl had limited space in her suitcase, all right? Like one suitcase, having to come back to the US, I was definitely like, I'm just gonna leave clothes behind so I can haul all these freaking books. 13 bookstores means at least 13 books, I was guessing. You'll never guess how many books I actually ended up taking home with me. Now this is actually inspired by real life events where a woman was accused of killing her lover. And the real 
real question is why would she you know why would she risk having a lover when she had a husband she was rich she was high in society so why would she take up a lover and then why would she throw all of that away by murdering him so this is told really from her perspective and it's really supposed to touch on the unheard voice of women when it comes to these situations so we're gonna explore this it was really cool I started reading it while in Edinburgh because it just caught me right away like the first page just captured me so I'm actually really enjoying it so far but like the mood reader I am I ditched it and started juggling three other books so we'll see when I finally get to it but this book is certainly promising and those edges I cannot get over these gorgeous edges now while I was in Waterstones I was looking for a tote I was like if I can't get a book I'll get a tote or I'll get a bookmark and I actually ended up finding books and totes at Waterstones and I got this tote bag it says I'm a bookover and it has Waterstones on the side of the book on the spine which I really liked because I really like to know where my totes come from you know like something different but not always canvas all the time this was so cute and it actually ended up being a lifesaver I ended up using this for most of my trip which is why the straps are all skinny because I was just taking this everywhere and you can actually see it in some of my Instagram pictures because I did post some while I was in Edinburgh and I'm sorry if I'm so gushing and fangirling over this trip it was just everything my little heart desired and even more the streets the atmosphere the food the people maybe it was also nice being in a country where I am fluent in the language and I didn't have to translate everything in my head but I was just so happy it gave me Pacific Northwest weather vibes and I was just happy to walk around everywhere okay so this is one of guess how many tote bags I bought I will tell you at the end of this video so that you don't judge me while watching this the whole time so like I mentioned because there are multiple editions I just had to snag the legends and lattes UK edition look how beautiful this is we may have a consumerism issue out here in the book community because did I need this no but is it really nice to have I guess <laughs> it features a character that basically brings coffee to a town for the first time and they don't know what coffee is so just imagine trying to explain to people bean juice and how it smells and what it's supposed to do and how to drink it and the multiple ways you can drink it that is what our lovely Viv does here when she opens her own coffee shop in this really cute town and basically you you have found family high fantasy but also low fantasy because it's cozy it was just really sweet and I'm excited to have this edition so I'll just add that to the list and cry that I won't have the prequel UK edition. But what can you do? This book I actually ended up buying at an indie bookstore called Transreal or Transreal maybe is how you actually pronounce it. This bookshop totally surprised me. I added it on there because it's considered one of the top bookstores if you like fantasy and sci-fi, which I do. However, I made this itinerary a month before I left to Scotland. So I really forgot about every single detail for every single book shop I knew they all had their unique little trait and I completely forgot that Transreal is actually for sci-fi and fantasy lovers so when I stepped in I was like holy crap how am I gonna leave with no books in my hands this is amazing it is my genre it is my time to shine I was so ecstatic it is much smaller much cozier the owner was really nice he just let you do your own thing and I just had a ton of fun in there and I may have scared some girls in there too because they were talking about masters of death and whether or not her friend should pick it up and I was like girl you need to pick up this book and like who even asked me the other book I actually picked up is the sun and the void if you don't know what it looks like here it is this is the UK edition it was I think featured in one of the sub boxes they had edges unfortunately this one does not have edges but I just thought it's way prettier than the US version which I'm popping up here for you so you can see the differences and see which one you like more let me know down below so I I picked this one up it is also a highly anticipated release I've heard really good things about it I kept checking reviews to make sure I was pacing myself and picking books that I was like is this worth it is this not if I hadn't fully heard about it or haven't fully looked into it myself most books I bought were in a pre-list I had a priority list but I also decided to spoil myself and get some last-minute editions if I thought it was worth it can I fully tell you what this is about not fully only that it's fantasy it's secretive there's a king 
Kingdom Apparel. Of course, that is most of our fantasy books, but we love it anyway. I think I was most excited because this is created by a Venezuelan author, and I was so excited to see Latin names and Latin characters in here. And again, it has raving reviews, so I really can't wait to read about Reina's journey in here. Let me know if you've read this one or if you've heard more about it. We still have a ton more to go. I promise you I am getting through this. Next up are three more hauls from Blackwells. I realized that some of these other bookstores that were really beautiful, I still recommend, but they didn't really have editions or modern new releases. So I ended up going back to Blackwells. It was one of the first bookstores I hit up and I told myself, I don't want to buy everything in the spot because I want to support other bookshops and also check other books out. Since nothing really popped out, I did end up going back to Blackwells and I purchased these three. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And I know what you're going to tell me, Joanna, you were talking mad crap about this book. You didn't fully like it. And let me just say yes, but it's so pretty. Okay. It is so pretty. I thought especially the last third was so moving and the last part was moving. It was not one of my top, top favorites, but it wasn't also like a least favorite where I don't even really own an Akatar book anymore because the first one's just so bled to me. It is actually the illustrated version. So it has all of these flowers and it has sprayed edges on the top and bottom and it has these gorgeous illustrations and that's what sold me it's just everything that she talks about in here because she has been drawn throughout her life even though she's forgotten they actually show you some of those drawings and illustrations that she talks about when she sees paintings of herself like this famous one with her holding a bird it's just really pretty I really enjoyed seeing all the illustrations and had to have it myself and happily ever April over here on YouTube may have also convinced me that I need to go back and snag this so I did <laughs> I was also looking for beautiful editions like I said I have not been purchasing books like crazy and I knew I would have a really big haul coming up when going to Scotland so I really reserved everything for that don't judge me okay this is a brave and hopefully safe enough space to be this honest with you. <laughs> then I found Her Radiant Curse. I haven't heard so, so much about this book, but it honestly sounded so interested. It was on my radar. I just haven't seen it super, super out there in mainstream media right now. And look at these edges. It was really cool seeing like pink edges. Like I've said, I don't really have a lot of pink books and not that I need pink books, but I think it's a out of the ordinary color than we normally see. So this is written by the same author of Six Crimson Cranes, which I really want to try. I've heard really great things about their writing and their representation. And this features an MC who's not beautiful, who is cursed, but is fighting fiercely for her beautiful sister who's destined to be with a horrible, horrible suitor. So I'm really excited for the fierceness, the empowerment in this book. I'm very excited to read it. And again, if you've read it or if you heard more about it, let me know down below. And then I could not believe my luck, okay? I found divine rivals in hardcover okay because i'm a hardcover girly i love collecting hardcovers because they just last a little bit longer in the way that i like them it's a me thing okay definitely made my life more complicated because luggage weight hardcover way less books but worth it. I was so excited to see this because this has been out for a while now and is so, so popular. I've talked about it here on this channel. I love the enemies to lovers here. Her writing is spectacular. It just stopped me in my tracks and very rarely can an author really stop me to admire their writing and a beautiful sentence structure. So this has been really sweeping bookstagram because of the romance and the sweetness and the banter between Kit and Iris. So I have a special edition from Owl Crate that I absolutely cherish, but I could not help but snag this one, okay? Illustrations like this are not normally my ultimate favorite, but I just thought this was so lovely. I really like this one so much, and I'm just gonna cry because I also won't be able to get its companion, Ruthless Vows. They just released the cover for this, and it looks so much more intimate than I expected. This was the only one they had in that Blackwells, in Waterstones, in person, like they searched okay and this was the only one they had so I was like super 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 happy to snack this one up I just had to because it's just such a sweet story that I really cherish but as we're going through these books let me know if you like this version my version the US version whatever it may be let me know what you prefer as we're going through these books next up we have to talk about McNaughton's and Typewrongers these are actually pretty much conjoined even though they are separate independent bookstores Typewrongers is more about typewriters and McNaughton's is more 
more used books. So I didn't fully know what to expect, except that they were closed down during the Panini. And I was really excited that they were open back up during my visit. So I was so excited to go in. And I have to say that out of all the booksellers that I interacted with, the bookseller in Typebronger was so freaking kind. And they even gave me the cutest little origami. And apparently this is a thing. When people go shop in there, they end up collecting all these different origami creations. I've seen elephants, I've seen giraffes, I've seen different, different creatures. So I was really surprised when I was purchasing my book, they asked me, do you like dragons? Or do you like, I don't even remember what the other one was. And as a fantasy lover, I was like, dragon what does this mean i thought they were gonna stamp my book and put like a dragon or something nope they came out they pulled out the cutest little dragon that was folded it was so so adorable i'll show you a picture right here it was so cute i made sure to take care of it so it could come back and not be squished or anything like that it was such a sweet touch on their behalf i ended up getting an indie bookshop exclusive version of the ghost ship so I just saw this on the shelf and it stood out to me. It's a book about a pirate. It has a lot going on because it's also inspired by real historical events and it focuses a strong woman pirate. So I was so excited. I kept reading reviews. I realized it's a whole series. There are multiple books, but, but they're not really together. So you can read them in chronological order. Some of them you do have to read to understand, but this one you do not. So I was so grateful because out of all of them, this sounded the most interesting to me I mean the ghost ship like are you kidding me it's bringing me back to Captain Jack Sparrow and all of that era I just love a good pirate book and then of course look at these edges oh my gosh I'm just dying it is so stunning it is so beautiful I just love this edition so much it's a limited edition for independent bookstores only so I was also really happy to support an independent bookstore because I think if you can you should you know I was super excited and in the end look they did actually end up putting the type wronger book stamp in there they did ask me if I wanted it before doing this so if you don't want your your book stamped because you don't like that it's totally okay but I was happy to get it because at the bottom it says books Edinburgh and I was just really happy to have another memento that hey this came from one of the bookshops on my list and I was so excited to get it and of course it is also signed so shout out to that bookseller it was such a sweet experience and I was really happy to also purchase an actual book from there and like support them by the way if you are enjoying this craziness and this book haul make sure you hit that like Button. or even if this isn't really your favorite video you can also hit that dislike and just let me know okay so this next one I actually got from Waterstones and I have to say I was pretty much disappointed by this visit I'm not shading Waterstones they have gorgeous editions but I think because they have gorgeous editions I was expecting a fully stocked bookshop and like so many choices and so many different versions and unfortunately when I got there it was pretty bare bones there were a lot of editions I think Blackwell's had way more because it was smaller but I did find some new ones that were just really interesting and I actually ended up getting he who drowned the world so this one stood out to me I know that there's she who became the sun and I haven't read that one but this one stood out to me more I don't know why I just love a tragic story and the blurb sounded like it would be super tragic like make me cry and I give you five stars all right of course we have edges we have beautiful beautiful edges as well so I know Notice that rarely do a lot of bookstores have like all three sides with stenciled edges. This one is what I typically saw in Waterstones because they had other sprayed edges. But again, if the book doesn't fully interest me, I'm not gonna get it just for the edges. Don't look at adding the room. Typically they have a stenciled edge and then a sprayed edge. So if you don't know, sprayed edges usually means one solid color. Stenciled edges usually means a pattern or there's some type of illustration on there. So when someone has has three stenciled edges it's like oh my god like a collector's dream <laughs> but I thought this was lovely I can't wait to get into it and as far as I could tell I 
do not have to read She Who Became the Sun to understand He Who Drowned the World. Now there are a ton of other bookstores I visited that I haven't fully talked about. One of them is Golden Hair. I think someone in my family actually took that tote bag, but I did get a tote bag from Golden Hair because unfortunately I didn't see any book that I really, really wanted or that stood out in some special way. And Golden Hair is an independently owned bookshop. I actually went to Golden Hair after visiting this really, really beautiful neighborhood. I walked down Dean's Village. It was so gorgeous. It's along like this river lake thing. And you actually see a lot of like old buildings. It is beautiful inside. It is very warm. It is cozy. I have some of my favorite pictures from there. It was a really nice bookstore and I really didn't want to leave without supporting if I was able. And I did find a tote bag that I thought was different. I'm kind of tired of seeing just blank canvas. I'm trying to get different tote bags with different colors and I saw that they had a navy blue one that said golden hair and it had the bunny on there or the hair I guess I should say. I saw many different bookstores and I'll label them all down below. I'll probably have to fully make a whole other video to tell you how my book crawl was and what I recommend if that's something that you're interested in seeing. For now I'm just highlighting some of the bookstores that really really stole my heart and I have to mention toppings. Toppings blew my mind. I did not expect this bookstore to be this humongous and have so many options. This is definitely the bookstore that I spent the most hours in. I spent at least three hours and probably another three later on. I went back and made final purchases before the end of my trip. This was definitely the place that had way more fantasy, way more YA fantasy in hardcover. So a lot of these bookstores did have YA, Waterstones had a YA section, but it was all mainly paperback, which was a bummer to me because like I said, I'm a hardcover type of person. Here is the toppings book haul, starting with A Frosted Star. So here's something that's really cool about Topping and Company. They actually add this plastic wrap around their covers and you can like take it off and it'll be totally okay. But as a person who was traveling and having to put these all in their suitcase, I was actually really grateful they did this because it made sure that, you know, I'm not smudging it, that I'm not really wrecking the dust jacket or anything like that. And they also have a lot of their own editions or signed editions. And so Toppings will put this little band inside that is removable. It's not a sticker, thank goodness. And it will say signed first edition for Topping and Company exclusively. They are definitely more of a franchise and bigger. I kept seeing it over and over because it's a newly released book and it just sounds so fairy tale like and so enchanting. And this one was a signed special edition with the golden swan in the cover, which just made it even better. Look at that. That looks so lovely. I was torn. I was definitely like torn between two different stacks that I even posted online. And I'm really happy I was able to go back and like snag some of those as well. You can tell in the back where they are located. They have one in Bath, which I heard is like the town of books, Edinburgh, Ellie, and St. Andrews. Following that unexpected purchase is another une unexpected purchase, which is this one, Sparrow. So this just sounded so freaking interesting, but of course it was the edges <laughs> that caught my attention. Look at this. It is so freaking stunning. It has this bird, the sparrow, and it has the lemons and like, I forgot the name of this. It's not cherries. It's like a type of berry. It is fully sprayed at the bottom and at the top, but this is just super stunning. And like I said, I just appreciated the plastic cover and it's a signed first edition. So this stood out to me because it's actually historical fiction and it is about a Roman slave. Basically he's a slave and I've never really read a book told from that perspective. I've read women tell their stories who could also be slaves. I've done a lot of Greek retellings where they just get creative and really touch on some of the more uncomfortable aspects of Greek tales, but I haven't yet seen or read a book that really focuses on a slave in this era. So it's actually highlighting the brutal life of someone during this amazing empire, right? The Roman Empire is incredible, but we don't often hear about the slaves or their point of view or their, their way of living who actually built this in the first place. And so this is actually focused on a character who's the sparrow and how he goes about his day and his life and the brutal truth of it without just sensationalizing his life or anything like that. So it just sounded so good. I kept putting it down, picking it back up, and I'm really excited to get into to this one. Definitely seems like a book that would make me cry. And you know what we say on this channel? Cry? Bye.
you know it, you get it, you get it. My last three books, I promise y'all, we're getting through this. <laughs> On the top of my list, of course, was actually Once Upon a Broken Heart and that whole series. And you guys, I found it, okay? In hardcover, I found the, the jackpot. I was so excited to get both of these. I saw them, I snagged them. I actually only saw this at first and then I saw a pile in the corner under the table and I was just like bent, like going through the books and I found this one, The Ballad of Never After. So Once Upon a Broken Heart is the first book. It is a spinoff of Caraval. If you didn't know, I featured it. I've talked about it. I've recommended it. It is like the example of romanticy and also very fairy tale like. It is like our modern fairy tale take. Everyone's so excited for the third book that should come out this month. It is A Kiss of True Love. Again, crying because I won't finish my set, but super excited to have these stunning editions. So here Here's Once Upon a Broken Heart. There's no sprayed edges or anything. It's not the Fairy Loot edition or anything like that. But I was so stoked to see it because again, hardcovers are really the first print. After that, it's just paperback. And as a person who loves hardcover, I was really excited that I was able to snag this. And I was so happy again to find The Ballad of Never After. I was just so sad that I wouldn't be there to get A Kiss of True Love, the hardcover, and finish my collection because it is completely sold out on Waterstones as well. So it's not like I can just order it and have it shipped. Plus I just hate paying for the shipping and I, I just hate it, okay? But like I went there, I'm gonna pick up as many books as possible and like ship it back myself. The back says not every love is meant to be. I haven't fully checked the inside. So a big reason they actually had these books is because they had a huge, huge event that featured Adeline Grace, who's the author of Belladonna, they had Rebecca Ross, they had Stephanie Garber, they had Adrienne Young, and the fifth author is Rachel Griffin. But I was just crying because they were literally arriving the day I was leaving Europe in general, that I was leaving that side of the world. So I was actually flying back that same day they were doing that event, and I was just there like three days shy from actually being able to go to the event. I was so distraught, but what can you do? But I guess it makes up for it a little bit because guess what this last book is? Guess, guess what I found? Guess what I found? I found a fire endless in hardcover. I was so excited to find this gorgeous edition by Rebecca Ross. I, of course, was looking up and down all the used bookstores in Edinburgh for A River Enchanted in hardcover as well. But no, I just love this edition so much and it's going for like incredibly high prices and I snagged the last one. While I was there, I saw it. The second day when I came back, I saw this edition. I was like, snatch, you're coming home with me. I was squealing, I was like dancing on the spot, just so excited that Missa thought I was freaking nuts because I just came with this huge pile. I'm gonna have to do a whole other video on like consumerism in the bookish community and how I play a role in that and what I think and all of that stuff. But for now, we're celebrating the haul. Now there's one more bookstore I'm gonna highlight because I did get two tote bags from there and that is John Kay's on Victoria Street. Let me just tell you, Victoria Street is gorgeous. And I'm gonna mention these things even though I know how harmful this series has been, but Harry Potter and the Diagon Alley was actually heavily inspired or said to be heavily inspired by Victoria Street in Edinburgh because JK Rowling actually did so much writing there. And I didn't wanna visit Victoria Street necessarily because I was like, oh, Diagon Alley. I wanted to go because I heard it's stunning in its own right. And it has all these shops and all these really cute things and it was really beautiful it was very lovely definitely when I was posting about it a lot of people complimented that street and a few people also said it reminded them of Diagon Alley even though they weren't like the biggest fan so definitely was inspired by that now John Kay's bookstore sits right on Victoria Street and is said to be the inspiration for Ollivanders I think for the wand shop but I do want to give you some insight on why it's so popular and still so touristy today especially with book lovers that have loved the Potter books for so long. And so I did not really get anything from there, but this tote bag, because it's just straight up facts, okay? It says Edinburgh built on books. And I was like, that's right, baby. It really is. So Edinburgh has the very famous Edinburgh castle that has gone through multiple hands. And as a history nerd, I could tell you all about it. But the point is, it's a really large structure. It sits on this humongous piece of rock and it overlooks the entire city. Like at a lot of different points, you could actually see this castle and I've gotten some stunning views
reviews where there's just nobody there and there are these two beautiful Edinburgh buildings and the castle's like right smack in the middle. It's just beautiful. So here we have the castle and it's sitting on that rock, but it says it's built on books and it's a book. And again, it's John Kay's in Victoria Street. And I just liked it so much because I wanted something that really touched on this, on the fact that Edinburgh loves booksellers, books, has so many freaking independent bookstores. Like I was just so shocked. I mean, I've lived in metropolitan cities before like Berlin and Portland and of course out here in California, but I've never seen so many indie bookstores in one place and especially filled with gorgeous editions. Y'all, I'm so excited to finally be back and doing more videos, talking to you all. I appreciate everyone that's been in touch over on Instagram and also on the Discord because yes, our readathon is continuing. It is at your own pace, whatever you want, more relaxed. I've loved talking to everyone on there and finding new friends. So I'll drop down the updated Discord link down below so that you can join if you want. And if you're new here or maybe you're not and you're not yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button to hang out here with me some more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.